Pulling the mushroom out of the ground like that is so idiotic. You need to use a knife or scissors and cut it so that you don't damage the root system. Now it can't grow back there. If you cut the mushroom from the base as opposed to pulling it up, it won't damage the mycelium. Can you not destroy another fruiting body that you find? They can be appreciated without damaging them or ripping them out of the earth. At least cut the stem and leave some of the root in the ground to continue growing. Why are you pulling mushrooms out with their roots? Mushrooms need to be cut. Why are you cutting the mushrooms? This is not the right thing. The leftover mushroom will rot and kill the mycelium. Can you imagine if I cut the mushrooms with a knife in this video? Then I would get comments telling me that I shouldn't cut them. I should pull them out. But then if I twist them and I pull them out with my hands in another video, I get comments about, why do you tear them out with your roots? Where is your knife? We have read such comments over and over almost every day, and I got tired of answering them, so I decided to make a video. Let's try to figure this out and finally resolve this eternal dispute of mushroom pickers, how to properly pick mushrooms. Do you cut it? Do you twist and pull? Well, perhaps we should start with the fact that mushrooms have no roots. The fungus is not a plant and does not have a root system, which is formed by plants in the usual sense. The real fungus consists of mycelium. In biology, it's called the mycelium of the fungus, which is located either in the soil or the wood or in the forest floor. Mycelium is a huge web of hyphae, thin, the size is in micrometers, fungal cells growing only from the apical end. And at a moment of suitable conditions, this bio network decides that it is time to form a fruit body and spread its pores in order to renew its habitat and seize a new territory. In this moment, the bunch of hyphae growing only from the apical end is cleverly twisted, forming after the primary, then the secondary mycelium and then the body of the fungus, that is the tertiary mycelium, and the spore-forming part of the fungus, the hymenophore. This is the fruiting body of the mushroom that we collect and eat. You don't think about what you need to do right when you cut an apple, pluck it, or wait for it to fall off on its own. Same goes for a mushroom. It absolutely does not matter if it is cut off, plucked, or if it simply decays after when it's released its spores. Mushrooms mycelium, much like an apple tree, will always remain where they are completely unharmed and will wait for more suitable conditions to bear more fruit. But from the point of view of a mushroom, what do mushrooms really want? This is what he wants. And this. And I can imagine this too. And for this, your mushrooms will thank you. And for that, they will be grateful. Fungi wants to be eaten by rodents, deer, gnawed on by insects, by worms, so that squirrels drag him along the trees as far as possible, or that deer, man, or bear stumble over him and break him. This is why they grow near animal paths, along roadsides, hiking trails, around campgrounds. We have a video on our channel about how a squirrel plants mushrooms in the forest. The link is in the description if you are interested. Mushrooms have shown themselves to people. All professional mushroom pickers notice that mushrooms seem to be drawn to people and they do this so that people will at least pay some attention to them. Even if you twirl them in your hands for a bit and then throw him into the bushes from the road, this is exactly what the mushroom needs. In just that little bit of time, the fungus can spread in the windy air millions of invisible spores. And if you collect them and carry them around the forest all day in a basket or a net, you are doing the mushroom and the forest an invaluable service because mushrooms, their spores cannot move on their own and they rely on outside forces, wind, water, animals, and insects in order to get around. So now from our point of view, what is better for us to do is to cut or twist and pull the mushrooms, especially when studying them or collecting them for food. The stem of the fungus is one of the main components 
that feature many morphological characteristics, which is often very necessary for the correct classification and identification of the fungus. The stems of mushroom are often buried deeply in the forest litter or moss. Even if you are a very experienced mushroom picker, according to statistics, the stupidest mistakes that lead to mushroom poisoning often happen with experienced mushroom pickers. You can mistakenly pick up a dangerous Amanita phylloids when collecting green or yellow mushroom species of the Rasula family and put it in your basket. Remains of a veil on a stem and warts on a cap of death cap and other members of the Amanita family may be absent for many reasons, but a vulva on a leg is a very important feature that can save a life. Collecting, for example, a bluet or closely looking Lipista glaucocana and cutting off the stems, you can skip an important morphological feature and collect by mistake the inedible mushroom, Cortinarius comforatus, a very similar mushroom but with a very thickened stem at the base in contrast to the almost straight, slightly widened stem of Lipista nuda or glaucocana. When cutting a mushroom, in addition to the risk of making a mistake in identifying the fungus, you can lose a significant part of their collection mass. For example, Boletus edulus, Lucinium, and other mushrooms have a significant part of their stem hidden in the substrate leaf litter or the moss. If I cut such a thick mushroom stem, I can leave anywhere from 50 grams, or in larger specimens, 100 grams of edible mushroom flesh in the ground not an acceptable waste for a real mushroom picker. It is up to you to cut or twist and pull. When you really need a knife, that's when you're collecting wood mushrooms, since it is better to cut them off because the fleshy stiff stems are sometimes very tightly attached to the wood, and also in order to avoid taking excess wood debris, which is afterwards difficult to wash out of thick and wide gills, for example, of an oyster mushroom. And also, a knife is simply necessary when collecting some polypores, which have a wide strip of stem or a cap that is completely attached to the bark of the tree. And a knife is also needed to collect chaga. Some polypores, such as reishi or Ganoderma mushrooms, are easily separated from the wood surface and do not lend themselves to a knife at all. Because of their hard lacquered cap and stem, it is better to break them with your hands. I even saw how some people cut large chaga with a chainsaw. I can imagine how big the mushroom was there before. But even chaga can sometimes be broken off by hand, depending on the shape. I myself am not a big knife lover. I mainly use the knife only for cleaning the already collected mushrooms. One person wrote a comment to me, and I want to end this video with this. I'm going to translate. This is by Grigori Bogorod. Mushrooms are harvested to whom it is convenient, who with a knife, and who just twists, and so and so right. Animals that eat mushrooms have no knives. Not all mushrooms are gathered in the forest. They rot. And humus is good for the soul, by the way. Those who come to the forest without a knife, as a rule, collect more mushrooms than those who use a knife. Nature loves hands, not knives. With knives, axes, and saws, we are destroying nature.